hello guys welcome to wix ideas in this video i want to show you how to add a state toggle into your wix website and i'm also going to show you how to use a cool animation for the buttons so that it looks as if the box is actually moving actually the box is moving i'm going to show you how to move the box through to this section and have that nice lighting animation into your Wix website and you can also see that um, color change of the current item that is being displayed so if you're excited to join me into this tutorial please don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so and also give this video a like i've also left the link to the code in this tutorial in the description below please do well to check it out and also check out my other tutorials okay so i'm here in the wix editor and this is the new editor that wix actually has in case you see this and it looks different from yours uh, it's not rolled out to every account yet on my other account which is my main account i haven't seen this yet but this is a very brilliant um, thing that wix has actually added right here and here it says start designing your section at the design section you can see that they have multiple sections that you can just uh, drag and drop into your website and that is really really looking cool and you can go ahead and customize these sections or you can go ahead and add um, elements if you want to use uh, elements so let's click on add elements you can see it brings up this uh, element box all right so let's begin designing what we need to do for the day and that is we want to add a multi-state box two buttons and one box so that is just all we're going to use for this tutorial so if you have um maybe you have multiple states and you want to use this animation you can actually you're welcome to actually do so and here the first thing i want to add is my multi-state box and to do that you're going to head over to your interactive now usually it appears here but because it's a velo element it only works with velo that means you need to actually turn on your dev mode to be able to see it so let's turn on our dev mode and then let's head back to our add and then interactive and here is our motor state box now i want to use a preset motor state box because i don't want to design it from scratch or add multiple elements to it so let me drag this down because i want to place my buttons here now the next thing i want to do is to add my buttons and i want to add those buttons from here go to buttons and here you can add any button that you want to use but the most important thing is that we need to make sure that the button is transparent enough but only the text can be seen and before we do that let's change the text and i'm going to call this first state so this button is going to toggle our first states and then next i'm going to go to design and then i want to start designing this button and make it transparent so the background fill is going to be zero percent and then the text itself is going to be a black color so that it's easily seen and i want to change the font and i'm going to use poppins for this tutorial all right and then next i'm going to go ahead and make sure that there is nothing like uh, borders or corners or shadows we don't need any of those and also make sure that the hover color uh, fill is also zero and also make sure that the border is uh, zero pixel in width we don't need any of those because we want to be making use of a box element that is going to be hovering over the uh, items okay so this seems about done and i'm going to go ahead and duplicate these elements so let's go ahead here i'm going to duplicate these and bring this over to this section and most importantly let's make sure that these two elements are aligned so you can hold on your uh, control to click on the second one and then group them together and you can bring out your toolbar and align them to the center of your page now once you're done you can go ahead and un ungroup these elements and i want to change this to say second state so this button is going to toggle my second state all right and then next thing i want to add is a box element that is going to be overlaying these uh, items when i click on this it's going to move to this second button so let's go over to add and then i'm going to go to box and here i'm going to drag in this box into my page and most importantly if i put this over this item you can see that it's actually uh, has a color and that means we won't be able to see what is behind it and our goal here is to make sure that we can see what is behind it so to do that we need to make sure that the background fill is set to zero percent and this is going to help us to see what is behind the box but most importantly we need to add a shadow because when i click out you can see that you can't see uh, anything being selected and so let's click on this box and then go back to design 
and what i want to do now is to go ahead and choose a box element that works with a shadow and this one seems to work better with a shadow first of all let's remove the borders and i want to add a shadow and the shadow here i'm going to set mine to what really works best for me i'm going to pause this video and then i'm going to get back to you guys with what works well for me all right so i have added the settings that work very well for me and I have displayed the settings on the screen so you can go ahead and use my same exact settings that i really preferred for my shadows now the most important thing here is that we need to make the corner radius to kind of you know have that circular kind of radius so let's go to corners and i'm going to set this to 100 percent now this is going to make it look very modern so let's go ahead and resize this to the sizes of those button elements that we have i'm going to drag this one to this section and i'm going to reduce the size of the box a little bit further and place it just around uh, perfectly in between the first item now you can see that this is beginning to make sense and finally what we need to do is to click on this item i want to arrange it and make sure that it is on top at all times okay and now we are done with this uh, design of what we need to actually make this thing to work and the uh, next thing we want to do is to give them their ids we want to be able to know what ids we're working with so first of all i'm going to name the first button i'm going to name this one to be first button so let me expand the properties panel and here i'm going to change the id to first button now i'm using a camera case to display the id which means the first word is in lower cases and the second word is in like in a title case where the first letter is uppercase okay so this is first button and then the second one is second button so i'm going to also use the camera case second button with the second uh first word which is second has all lower cases and the second word button is in uh, the first letter is in upper case now the reason why i am doing this is because i want to use a piece of code that is going to map through the ids and be able to generate a setting that works effortlessly all right so the second id here that i need is the box so i'm going to call this the slide box awesome now the next thing i want to name also is the motor states element I'm going to expand also my properties panel and here I'm going to call this one the toggle states box. Alright, so notice again I'm using the camera case to actually enter in the IDs. So the next items that we need to add the IDs are the states that we're working with. Now although this um, box has three states but I want to work with two states and you can add more states as you want. So here I'm going to edit the ID. And I'm going to change this one to the first state. So again, I'm using the camel case here to be able to enter in the ID. And this is going to help me also for the code. And then I'm going to edit the second one and also call it the second state. In a while, I'm going to show you why I am using this format to name the IDs. And as you can notice, we have one thing in common with the IDs of the buttons and one thing in common with the IDs with the states. And that is the prefix is the same so we have first state second state first button second button and this is something i'm going to show you also in the code while why we are actually making use of this now let's jump into the code i'm going to maximize my properties panel and the code panel and here i'm going to get rid of the first uh, comments that we have and all the comments that we do not need and i'm going to go to the code i have the link to the code in the description below please do all to check it out and on your way please don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so now let's go to the code the first thing we want to get here is the library for the wix animation i'm going to be using wix animation to actually do this tutorial and it is actually very simple to do so i'm going to first of all import the library for this animation and secondly we need to also get the variables that we have preset for the colors now i want to be able to change the color of those buttons whenever the active state is active so you can see from here i have the active color and here the color is actually a blue color and the inactive is the black color which is the default one that we have right over here all right so the next code or the piece of code we need to add is the unclick event for each of those buttons now what happens when we click on those buttons we're going to find that out right now so i'm going to paste in this all right so now you can see that we have this code and the first error that we have is the id of the button id one now the button id one is definitely the first button here so i'm going to go ahead and click on the first button 
and i'm going to go ahead and maximize my code panel and select the id copy that with my keyboard and paste it right here now that has solved that problem now when we click on the first button we want to change the state to the first state so this is where you place in the id of the first state and this is the id of the multi box or multi-state box id so let's go back to our page i'm going to click on the multi-state box i'm going to maximize this and then select the id of the multi-state box as you can see we have the state box id here and also here so i'm going to go ahead and replace them both together over here and once we're done we can move forward to the id of the current state so when we click on the first button i want to move to the first state of our multi-state element so let's go over here and then we're going to go to the first state and then we can go ahead and maximize our code panel and over here at the properties panel you can see the id of the multi-state box and also we can see the id of the state id or the current id that is active so let's copy that id for the state id and place it right here all right so the next part is actually the part that works with wix animation where we're going to be moving the box from one position to the other now you can see the only error we have is the box slider id and the box slider id is this big box that we have here and i call that the slide box from the beginning when i name the id and we need to change this id here and also here so i'm going to change this id real quickly and i want to explain to you what is going on here now if what is going on here is that we have the wix animation and then we have a new timeline where we're going to be adding the position of the box all right so this is the id of the box and these are the objects of the box so these are the properties of what the box is going to do and then here we have the x and this is the position where it occupies on the x axis so for example this is zero now the reason why this is zero is because zero is where the box is originally so originally this box is here and this is its x position which is zero now if it moves to this place it's definitely going to move to a new position which is going to be maybe 175 or something else we're going to find that out uh, pretty soon and the next thing we have is the duration of how long the box will actually slide to that section and then we have the play function and then once we're done it's going to play the animation and then we're going to see how that is going to slide smoothly to the new position that it is and then for the second button when we click on the second button we're going to quickly get a second button id from here i'm going to copy this second button from here and i'm going to place it right here and when we click on that we want to change the toggle or the change state for the toggle state box id and i want to change it to the second state so let's go back to our page and here i'm going to click on the state element and then go to the second state and i'm going to go back to my code and then under the properties panel you can see the state id so copy this state id and replace it here and the same thing will also happen when we have the wix animation so when we have the wix animation when we click on that button we're going to change its x position to 220 and i'm sure this is definitely wrong because this was what worked for me so depending on the distance you have from where the box was originally to the new position you want it to be this is where you indicate it and depending on how fast you want the animation to happen this is where you indicate it so this is 200 milliseconds which is actually very fast and uh, it's actually fair enough for you to use 200 or you can play around with this and see what kind of smoothness or transition that works better for you and then again we call the play method all right so let's go ahead and preview this and check out how fast or how well this transition actually occurs now when i click on the second button you can see that actually brought it to this position but you can see that the text or the button label is not in between the box so we need to make sure that this is perfect so i'm going to try that out i'm going to look for the perfect number that works for me and i'm going to get back to you guys all right so i realized that 210 actually works very well for me so placing it on 210 on the x position actually does the magic now we want to move to the final part of the code where we change the color of the button label so let's go back to the final part of the code copy this i'm going to place it right just below the second on click function and once you do that you can see that we're currently making use of the active and inactive colors and we have this error which is the state box id so let's go back to our code and copy the state box id from here and we're going to come back over here and copy it and place 
here now once you're done you're gonna have to look into this uh carefully to make sure that there is no uh, problem at all and as you can see we have this unchange event now when the state element is changed when the user is beginning to click on those buttons and the animation is working smoothly what do we want to happen to those buttons what else do you want to you know perform inside of your unchange event now from here you can see that we have uh, an array so this is a button that has two values inside of our array and here we have the id1 and id2 now remember that i've always been using a kind of a case sensitive format in naming my ids so for example i have the first uh first button second button first state second state and so on and remember that what is common between them is the prefix so they all have uh for example the first button and the first state they have first in common the second button and second state all have the second word in common so what we're going to do is to use those prefix and i'm going to go over here and put in the first prefix which is first and then the next one is second and uh, once you're done this is about the end of the code and but then i want to explain to you what is going on here so we're using the for each method to you know map through our array for our buttons and also for our state so we're using the event target dot current state id to be able to get what state is actually active so let's say the first state is active which is going to be here and then we want to also change the first button color or else if the second state is active then we want to change the second button color okay so that is just what this is so the button dot style dot color is equal to the active color so you can go ahead and change what color you have here so for me this is about a blue color so let's go ahead and uh, preview this and see how this actually works out when i click on this you can see that the color has changed to blue when i click on this you can see the color has changed to blue here and this is back to its original color and you can also notice that the state element is also changing as we do so so what we need to do finally is to be able to make sure that this color here is blue by default that means when the page load we want to make sure that this is blue because this is currently the current state or the first state so let's go back to our editor and i'm going to go ahead and copy this um, code i'm going to use that inside of my color label so let's go ahead and click on the first button go to design go to customize i'm going to change the text color to uh, the blue color that we have so let me add that right there and once you're done you can go ahead and preview and then let's take a look at how this actually works now you can see that the first state that is active is currently displaying the color and the second one is also displaying the blue color which is the active so you can go ahead and choose whatever active color you have now to the main important part here where i want to clarify something I made a similar tutorial before where I talked about motor states elements and changing of the colors of the buttons and issues that comes with changing the colors of the buttons. Now one of the biggest issues that can happen is naming of your buttons. Now you can see that I'm using a camel case here for second button. So the second which is the first word are all lower cases. But the second word which is button is actually in upper case. And also the same thing for the states. The first word, which is first, is a lowercase, and the second one has the first letter in uppercase. Now the reason why you might have errors is that you have we have already defined in the code that we're going to have an ID that looks exactly like this, which means the prefix is going to be in lower cases like this, and then the suffix or the next word is going to have the uppercase B for the button. And also the same thing for the state ID. So whenever you're naming your elements, please do make sure to use the camel case. So you can see the format that I have used for the first button, for the second button, and uh, the states also, the state IDs. You can see how they all, all seem. So please do well to check out to make sure that your IDs are correct. And uh, that is the biggest problem you will have from, you know, use this kind of method. All right. So this is how you add a toggle state into your Wix website with cool animations for those button elements. I actually wanted to use this for a personal project and I decided to show you guys how to do something similar. And if you know that this tutorial was useful to you, don't forget to let me know how you made use of this or how you're going to make use of this. And also, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and give this video a like. Thank you very much, guys, and do have a great day.